Hey, good morning, New Dawn family, and happy Sunday. Um, my name is Pastor Erwin, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, just in case you're visiting for the first time. We just want to welcome you today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, good morning, Pastor Joanne. How good are morning. you? Good morning. It's yeah? great to be here. It's great to have all of you come in and join us today. Yeah, amen. amen. And, uh, you know, I just want to tell you that we just so love when we have visitors and guests come on. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, man, would you send us an email at connect at newdawnla.com. We would love to connect with you. We'd love to give you, send you a couple of uh, gifts to help you to grow spiritually. And uh, please reach out to us. It's going to be a great day. We have some incredible things we want to share with you and with our church family. It's going to be a different day today. I believe that with all my heart. And uh, But you know, my wife wanted just to share something with you guys, and I'm going to turn it over to her. Amen. Yes. Well, first of all, you know, most of you know that it, it was my birthday this past week, and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all the beautiful messages. I got them everywhere from Facebook, my cell phone. Thank you so much. I feel so loved, and I'm blessed to have all of you in my life. And you know, Pastor Erwin, I also want to share that, you know, we live, we are living in such a great time. Amen. And we believe that it is a new season. Yeah. So whatever you're going through today, just be ready to receive the word that God has for you. Be encouraged. Know that God is on your side and he's ready to do great and mighty things in your life today. So be blessed and thank you again. I love you all so much. Amen. Yeah. And you know, later on today, we have an, our, our outdoor service that we do at 1.30 uh, p.m. It's going to be awesome. And if you want the information on uh, where we'll be, you can just simply text us at 310-750-9637. You can just text us there. It's on the screen. And uh, we'll quickly send that out to you. We'd love to see your face. If you feel comfortable with worshiping together, we'll be outdoors. And it's, the services have been incredible. But I'll talk more about that later. But let's just have a word of prayer as we get ready as Minister Tasia and Brother Bernard leads us uh, today in worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We love you. We ask right now, Father God, that your Holy Spirit presence would just move mightily upon us. God, we thank you that we can't do anything without you. And we thank you today that not only will the worship, but the word of God will be so anointed. It will minister and impact lives. We thank you, Lord, that every listener, every hearer, and everyone watching will be ministered to by the glory and presence of God. So we honor you today, God. We set our hearts ready for worship, and we will worship you in spirit and in truth. Wherever we are, we just do that right now. We make a decision to do that. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. All right, well, we'll see you guys here in a couple of moments, and uh, we'll get, let's get ready for worship. Christian Village family and friends. I just thank God for being able to be with you yet another Sunday. We're going to get right into it and sing praise and worship this morning. And I encourage you to join in, sing praises, clap your hands, lift your hands and give God all the glory and the praise. What is the highest praise? Hallelujah. Shout it out from wherever you are. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Sing with us this morning. give you glory, God. We honor you, God. We love you, Lord. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the Melody. I raise 
Sing it out. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder. highest praise the word says that you knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb so we know that you have a purpose and a plan for our lives be encouraged he knows your name he walks with you he talks with you God we just love you this morning and we thank you for being who you are in our lives. Just continue to worship with us. 
Lift your hands and worship, worship right where you are. Thank you, Jesus. nor forsake us and we are so grateful and humble and so honored about that oh God thank you Jesus come on and lift him up let's declare it declare it no fire can burn me no battle can turn me no mountain can stop me cause you Thank you. 
me t behind the scenes let's get ready to hear the word by our own pastor Irwin. see y'all miss y'all y'all come back you hear Hey, my New Dawn family, happy Sunday, and man, it's once again a pleasure to be with you guys today to give you the word. I never take it lightly to be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I'm just so excited to be with you guys today. I hope that maybe you start a watch party, invite someone out, let them know that uh, they will be encouraged today by the word that they hear. Amen. And for all of our guests, man, God bless you. Thank you for being with us for the very first time. I hope you felt welcomed uh, as, as you see all the chatter going on on the comments, whether you're watching by Facebook or YouTube. Uh, I hope you felt welcomed. Amen. My name is Pastor Irwin once again, and I get to preach the word. And so I, I do want to say a couple of things before I get into my message. just want to uh, thank everybody for loving on my wife this past week with her birthday. You guys blessed her. Uh, you know, she just received some beautiful things, uh, beautiful gifts from you guys. And I just thank you for that because she's my wife and I love her. So thank you very much. And, um, you know, another thing I, I just did you see Minister Tina, uh, the way she the way she did that uh, transition? That was so funny. I was laughing. <laughs> So I just still have that in my head. It was great. Y'all come back now, you hear? So that was really, really good. I hope you saw that. But amen. But, uh, you know, we've been meeting outdoors uh, at 1.30 p.m. So later today we'll be outdoors again. And uh, you can uh, find out where we will be if you just send us a text at 310-750-9637. Uh, it has been amazing. Uh, we just, I wanted to share a testimony that happened last week is that we're sitting there and I'm about, I'm pre, I'm about to, I'm preaching already. I just started my message and I saw a young lady, maybe about 35 years old, walk over to our table where sort of our greeting table. And uh, my wife just engaged her and started talking to her. And then she came and sat in the service and it was just so powerful just to see what the Lord did in her life. And when she left, one of our one of our leaders was actually trying to get my attention, but I was working on something I think we were tearing down. She was literally skipping away from the service because she was so happy she received from the Lord and received prayer. And uh, it was just amazing. It was just, it's just been incredible. And so, yeah, if the Lord prompts you to be there today, we, we would love to see you. And I, I want to say something too, is that um, please, for all of our members that don't feel yet, you know, like, hey, I'm not comfortable yet. Don't worry about it. You don't need to call me. You don't need to tell me, listen, I love you. You know, we're family. And so I know, I know what's what. And so there's no need to tell me or, or just or feel bad or anything. Please don't give me those phone calls. I'm good. You know, uh, like like we said, this is something that we're doing. There was there were some people that just felt like, hey, we wanted to get back together. Uh, you know, I'm ready for that. And so we just made an opportunity for that. And so whenever the Lord 
Lord prompts you and you feel ready, man, come out and be with us because uh, it has just been a great, great time. I do want to just once again honor Raina uh, with the amazing message that she preached la last week. I'm so proud of her and uh, I'm just so proud of you guys just giving her some love because uh, it, it wasn't courtesy love. That girl really knocked it out of the park. She gave us a word that really ministered to all of us and I'm just so grateful for that word. I listened to it a couple of times this week and it just it, it was so awesome. I, I got so much out of it. Amen. But you know we're three weeks away from celebrating the greatest event that ever took place and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, so Resurrection Sunday's coming up on Sunday, April 4th. And on the screen, we just want to make an announcement of how we will be worshiping that day. We're actually going to offer three different services that day. And so if you look on the screen, you'll see that at 6.30 a.m., will actually be at a sunrise service. I will be tag teaming with uh, my friend and your friend, Pastor Joe Gill. We'll be doing a service together, preaching together. Tasia will be uh, ministering to in song in that service. It's at 6.30 a.m. over in Torrance. And so uh, we'll get you that address, of course. But uh, it's uh, it, it's just going to be an amazing time to, to do that together with two churches. Amen. And if you feel so compelled to be there with us, we would love to see you. It is outdoors. It's an outdoor service. Amen. And the second service is our 1030 a.m. regular online service. At 1030 a.m. we'll have a special celebration that day. And then, of course, at uh, uh, three o'clock, um, and I, I I've been talking about this, so I didn't mean to say, of course, but you, this is a lot of you guys are hearing this for the first time. But at 3 p.m., we will be having a big celebration once again in Torrance. We'll be using Joe's church, Pastor Joe's church, and we'll just have an awesome time together. We'll have live worship. Uh, it'll just be a fantastic time together. But I do, uh, I am inviting a special guest that day uh, will, that will help out with worship. And what I want to let you know is that I am. Uh, actually transforming that service uh, and, and I will be praying for miracles. I'll be praying for the Holy Spirit to touch people's lives. And, uh, and so I want to tell you, if you're hungry for God, you want to see a move of God, you come on Resurrection Sunday at 3 p.m. The Lord is going to minister to you. It's going to be so powerful. Please be praying for that because I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm ready and it, it is just going to be an amazing time. So just come ready to receive, get ready to receive the presence of the of the Lord in a mighty, mighty way as we glorify Jesus. Amen. So I want you guys to help me to celebrate and honor Jesus today. The title of my message is Dead Things Can Live. Again, amazingly, I had these notes uh, before I heard Raina's message, and uh, I just believe that it's the Holy Spirit just keeping us all in unity. But in John chapter 11, she alluded to this last week, and I want to tell you again because it's always worth uh, sharing different parts of the Word of God. And uh, Raina's perspective was amazing in talking about the resurrections. But I want to speak to you here that in this situation, of course, Lazarus has died. And so Jesus is on his way, and uh, um, you know, uh, Martha and Mary are heartbroken. Everybody's grieving. And of course, Jesus comes on the scene. And as he's walking up, you know, Martha says to Jesus, Master, you know, and of course shares about uh, Lazarus and everything. And she said, if if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. I know he wouldn't have died. Okay. And I'm putting it in Irwin's terms, right? And this is Jesus's response to Martha. And in verse 25 of John chapter 11, it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And so Jesus said here, I want to break this down in verse 25. He said, the one who believes in me will live 
even though they die. When a believer of Jesus dies, they live for eternity connected to the Father. That is real life. That is real life. And, and, and that is our expectation and our hope and our knowing as a believer. We do not fear death because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But look what he says here. And he says, and whoever lives, come on now, this is right now. And whoever lives now in my physical being right now in my life right now, whoever lives by believing, believing in me will never die. You will not never die. And you will always live because of Jesus. Amen. And we honor his resurrection. And he asked Martha a question. Do you believe this? And I want to ask you the question. Do you really believe that? Do you believe that when you take your last breath that you will enter into eternity? Come on now. In the presence of God Almighty. I, I'm telling you, it is so, so powerful. You know, I, I heard the statement that Billy Graham said. He says, if anybody tells you that Billy Graham is dead when I, when, when I die and anyone says that he's dead, tell them that they're wrong because I am more alive now. Hallelujah. Because I'm in the presence of the father. He's Billy Graham said, I do not fear death. I, I look forward to it because I will be with my father. So powerful. These words in first Corinthians chapter six, verse 14, it says by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also, come on, we want to honor. I, I tell you, I just feel a spirit of honoring Jesus. I feel a spirit of honoring my Lord for his resurrection, for his power, for everything that he did for me and that he did for you. Do you honor him today? Listen, there's re he said, and he will raise us also. He will raise you up in any area. Have you ever made a mess of your life? Have you ever done that? I know I have, but he has resurrection power. Have you ever uh, made a mess of your purpose? Maybe you were in line with, with, what, with the destiny of God and what he had planned for you. And all of a sudden you took a detour. You, you wanted to take the scenic route, whatever it was. But you know what? There's resurrection power to line you back up with the purposes of God. Have you ever made a, a mess of your marriage? Have have you ever, uh, in your relationship with your spouse, have you ever messed up and just made a mess of that? There's resurrection power to what looks dead. Have you ever messed up in your finances? Man, I'll put both my hands up. I've made so many mistakes, but there's resurrection power. God is able to fix it when we yield to him because he said this, in me is life. Come on. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. God can restore you again. How about your physical body? Have you ever needed resurrection in your physical body? He is, listen, he is the life, right? And, and guess what? I love that he said right there about Lazarus. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. You know, Mary, in, in, you look at those verses uh, uh, when you get a chance. But Mary said, oh, yeah, I know at the resurrection, I'll get to see Lazarus. And he said, no, I'm the res. Yeah, you'll, you'll get to see him when you die, too. But guess what? You're going to see him today because I am the resurrection and I am the life. I am life. And there is power. There's life in Jesus right now. You don't have to wait till you die. There's life in Jesus right now. You know, how about the soul of a person? I, 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 as, as, as your pastor, I want to say to you, I encourage you, I implore you, and I believe God begs you, would you open up your heart? Amen. Would you open up your heart to be concerned with the soul of another person? Eternity is real. See, there's resurrection power for so many things, but I believe the number one reason there's resurrection power is that we were lost and there's, and, and sin separates us from God. And because Jesus died, there's resurrection power in what he did to save us from what we've done in our separation from God. And we no longer have to be separated because of the resurrection. How oh, man, I'm, I know that that is a powerful thought right there. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 19, I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. It says this, for you know that your lives were ransomed once and for all from the empty and futile way of life handed down from generation 
to generation. It was not a ransom payment of silver and gold, which eventually perishes, but the precious blood of Christ, who like a spotless, unblemished lamb, was sacrificed for us. Man, you know that you were bought. He says, listen, you were not bought with gold and silver. That stuff is going to burn up and perish one day. But guess what? You are purchased with the most valuable thing ever, and that is the blood of Jesus Christ. I want to say to you that for the rest of your life, every day that you live, look at me, I want to I, I want to speak to you, that every day of your life, this message that I'm preaching today will be relevant for your life every day. You need to remember the resurrection of your Lord and Savior, because without the resurrection, we are lost, we are separated from God. But because of the resurrection, not only does He live forever and interceding for you and me, but we live forever. And even when we die, we live. And even right now, and, and we're on this earth, we live because of Him, because He is life. Jesus is life. Hallelujah. That is so powerful. He was, He is and was the spotless, unblemished Lamb that was sacrificed for you and for me. You know, in John chapter 8, verses 49 to 56, we see a story of a precious man named Jairus. And my heart bleeds for this man when I read this story because his little girl was dying. She was dying and he went to Jesus and said, Jesus, would you come and heal my daughter? Would you come and heal my daughter? And Jesus said, I will go. And so I, I can imagine maybe, I, I don't know, but I'm filling in the blanks with myself, but I can imagine every moment that they're taking a step and walking or uh, maybe they were taking a meal. I don't know. But maybe they, as they're on their way, he's like saying, oh, come on, baby girl, just hold on. Just hold on a little bit more. The master is coming. Come on, hold on a little bit more. The master is coming. And all of a sudden, somebody comes up to, to this man and says, don't trouble the master any longer. She has died. Let's read these scriptures, verse 49. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just believe and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing. Stop crying. Jesus said, she is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, my child, get up. Her spirit returned. Come on, everybody say that in your home right now. Her spirit returned. I can't hear you. I want, I want to hear you say that right now. Her spirit returned and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. He said to her, and, and get up and her spirit returned. Where was her spirit? Now, we don't know if her spirit was with God or separated from God. But here's what we do know is that her spirit, which is the real her, whoever this little girl is, that is the real her, came back into that shell of her body. And she was alive again on this earth. Let me tell you something. Jesus is the resurrection and he is the life. You know, I'm about to tell you, I'm being honest with you. I'm about to tell you a story that you'll never, ever forget here in a moment. But I felt led to do something before I transitioned because I do want, I also want to pray for you about some things with Jesus' resurrection power. But you know, I just want to honor God today. And I just want to tell you this, that it is worship. When we worship the Lord, we worship Him so many different ways. Clapping our hands, we worship Him with our life, our actions, but we also worship Jesus with our giving. And I believe there's resurrection power when we plant seed in the kingdom of God. You know, I'm not going to take long on this because for anyone who's ever uh, been in our service uh, at here at 1030 a.m., you know that we always receive the tithe and the offering. And on your screen, there's three different ways that you can give. You can give, uh, uh, you know, of course, at uh, newdawnla.com and give safely through PayPal. You can also give through Cash App. 
And then you can also uh, give by mailing to our P.O. Box. And there's one more thing that we're going to add, and you're going to see that number in a moment. But you can also text to give. You can also text to give. And we encourage you to set that up and do that for the first time on your phone because then it'll be easy to do that. And that number is right there. Now, I want to do something, church. I don't want to take long on this, but I want to let you know that, first of all, it is worship unto the Lord when we give. Secondly, I want you to know that thank you for your faithfulness because there are some things that you're going to hear about in the next two weeks. Some, something, to be honest with you, something I have never, ever done before like this, uh, like what, with what I'll be sharing with you. Uh, I just got the go-ahead and some green lights on some things and I had to meet with some people. Uh, to, but there are some things that are coming down the pike that I just believe will be transformational for our church. And I want to let you know that your faithfulness allows us to do some of the crazy things that we're going to do for the glory of God and win souls and, and touch people's lives with the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray for you, and I just thank you for your obedience. Father, I just thank you that even now there's resurrection power. There's resurrection power in the area of giving. And I thank you, Father, for those that have been struggling I thank you that as they take a step of faith and they sow that seed today, that they honor you, God, not honor Pastor Irwin, not honor New Dawn. I'm talking about honoring you, that, Father God, they will see a harvest like they've never seen before. I pray that for them, Father. I pray for resurrection power in the area of finances. So bless your people. We love you today, Father, in Jesus' name. Let me say this to you. There was, there was an evangelist. His name is Mario Murillo. And Mario Murillo, Mario Murillo did a lot of work at UC Berkeley. And over there in the San Francisco area. And as he was walking the streets, he would also go to the universities. Um, he's been punched. He's been spit at. He's been mocked. All these different things as he was doing this work at UC Berkeley. But he was walking the streets of San Francisco. And a man walks up to him, and his name is Isaac Bonwitz. And Isaac walked up to him, and he was a witch. He actually had a real human skull in his hand connected to chains when he walked up to this evangelist. And he walked up to the evangelist, and he said, I want to meet with you, Mario Murillo. I want to meet with you. And Mario Murillo is like, okay, you know. And the guy handed him his card. And he said, call me. I, I want to meet with you. And this guy was dressed, you know, basically like a warlock. And Mario Murillo took his card and he just put it in his pocket and just went away. He's like, you know, that dude's crazy or whatever like that. One day he goes to his home and at his home, there's an envelope and there's an invitation to dinner from this witch. Now, this guy, Isaac, listen to this. Can you believe this? I'm not saying he's the only one, but I think he was the first one. And this is how demonic this is with UC Berkeley. He was the first uh, person to get a bachelor's in witchcraft through U University of California, Berkeley. That is unbelievable. So he actually had a degree in witchcraft. And so Mario Marilla goes to his mailbox and he pulls out and there's an invitation to dinner. And Mario Marilla is like, you know, I'm not going to meet with this guy. He's, a, he's demonic. He's full of devils. Why am I going to meet with him? And he takes it and he's about to put it in the garbage can. And the Lord says, meet with him. Meet with him. So he takes it out, calls him and says, hey, listen. Let's set so they go. He goes to his house and he said, he literally, as he testifies about this, I, I've, I've heard him give testimony about this. And he said, literally, the guy's house looked like the Adams family house. And when he walked in, he oh, oh, the, just a crazy doorbell walks in, literally pentagrams uh, on the walls, all these different uh, black, literally, he said black cats. Uh, the guy was just, just so bizarre and all these different things. And he says, he said, I want to talk to you about your God. 
and he takes out this big book, like this old book, and it's newspaper clippings. And the and the and the, and the witch begins. Isaac begins to say to uh, uh, Mario. He begins to show him all these clippings. He goes, "You see that?" He goes, "I put a curse on this person, and they died." He goes, "You see this person? Someone paid me to put a curse on their spouse. Do you see this one right here? I healed this person with a druid worship type prayer." that I did and he go and he continues to look and Mario Murillo is completely overwhelmed with all this thing this book that this guy's showing him he says I have all these incantations I have all these spells and all this and he looks at Mario Murillo and he says what can your God do and Mario Murillo says in that moment he was frozen in that moment he's he he doesn't know what to do he's just like what do I say this guy just showed me all these different things and and uh, now he wants to compare God and the devil and all this stuff and he, he doesn't even know what to say and he said all of a sudden he felt the presence of God just hit him and and a, and a spirit of boldness came over him and he said Isaac he goes one thing he goes I will not compare my God and the devil because there is no comparison because my God is greater than anything that the devil can do but here's what I will compare and I do want to talk about Isaac he said I want to talk about your soul and my soul he says Isaac one day he goes you'll be on your deathbed and you'll be wheezing and withering away and you will have to answer to the devils and the demons that you submitted to. You'll have to answer and give an account to those devils and demons that you made promises to, that you cooperated with and as they're about to steal your soul to hell forever, you will die and you will be separated from God if you don't give your heart to Jesus Christ. He said, but let me tell you about me. One day I'll die and when I open my eyes, when I I'm in the courtroom of heaven. My Jesus, because he spilled his blood and because he is my advocate, he is the one who died for me. That God will say, I know who you are because of you received my son and the blood of Jesus will cleanse you and purify you of everything I've ever done. And guess what? I will be with my father forever. They'll be rejoicing and I'll spend eternity with my God while you burn giving an account and answering to those devils and demons that you submitted your life to. And Isaac stood up after Mario said this, and he said, you must get out of here right now. You must leave right now. And Mario Murillo walked out. Sometime after, that guy Isaac actually had different wives. One of his wives got saved. And she found Mario Murillo and told him, said, listen, I was Isaac's wife, one of his wives. And I want to let you know I'm born again right now. But I, here's what I want to tell you. That experience shook him to the core. Man, that is so powerful. You know why? Because the resurrection power of Jesus and his blood, listen, transforms lives forever. He is resurrection power for anything that is dead in your life. He is, the Bible says, the lily of the valley. Do you ever think why it says he's a lily of the valley? Because in the valley everything's dead, but he stands out as the thing that's alive. This thing that's alive in the middle of deadness. God can be anywhere and any, any place that you need him to be because he is every place in your heart, everywhere that you are. He walks with you. And he talks with you and he will fight for you. He is the peace in the middle of the storm. He is the soft voice in the hurricane. You can have all hell breaking loose around you, but God will speak to you in the middle of the storm. He is the name changer. He will do something for you like he did with Paul. He changed his name from Saul, the murderer, to Paul. Hallelujah. The evangelist, the preacher, the apostle that changed the earth. Hallelujah. He is the 180 in my life. Come Come on now, if you do a 360, you end up right where you are. But no, Jesus is the 180. He'll transform you and get you on the right path. He is grace. He is mercy. He is love. He is the healer of our bodies. He is the deliverer. He restores and he makes new. He cleanses and he purifies. He is the lion in my battle. Hallelujah. He is the shield in my defense. He is the hedge when I'm surrounded. He is the I am in everything. Hallelujah. Whatever 
of your face and you can say that Jesus is the I am and he, he will be right there with you and for you. He's a deliverer. He is freedom and he is Jesus, God's son and the savior of the world. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God's resurrection power is active and flowing right now. And, and, and all you have to do is yield yourself to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Will you do that right now? There's some of you watching right now. If you took your last breath, you would not be with God. You have not given your heart to Jesus. And God is calling you today and saying, will you serve me? The Lord says, will you serve me? Jesus says, saying, will you serve me? Make him Lord of your life. I want to pray with you. Father, I pray for everyone watching that if there be anyone that does not know you today, they will surrender to you. Repeat this prayer after me if you want that in your life. Say, Father God, I believe in you. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I surrender, God. I believe Jesus Christ is your son, that he died on the cross 2,000 years ago for my sin and I believe three days later he resurrected from the dead and he is alive and because he's alive I can live forever I yield myself to you Jesus come into my heart and make me new if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, I want you to do two things. Let everybody know wherever you're watching, Facebook, YouTube, put a comment in there. I received Jesus today or I rededicated my life to the Lord. I'm going to serve Jesus. You email us at connect at newdawnla.com and we're going to send you two gifts to help you to grow spiritually. We want to help you to grow and if you're interested in really growing further in your relationship with God, we have, we have a, a, a class that we can send to you online. It's called Growth Track. It's really, it's, five, it's four classes and an intro that's really easy but it will help you to identify and serve Jesus in a powerful, powerful way. Listen, we can do that. We want to help you to grow spiritually. If you haven't been through Growth track let us know at that same email but I want to speak one last thing before I let you go today for everyone watching that there's resurrection power in Jesus don't ever forget that message that message will never be old it'll never be stale it'll never be washed down it is the message Christ crucified risen and he is alive hallelujah and we are alive and in every area that you need father i pray one last prayer that if anyone needs physical healing in their body release supernatural miracles over them right now i thank you that their life is transformed their mind is transformed there's resurrection power in your marriage there's resurrection power in your finances there, there's resurrection power with your children there's resurrection power hallelujah and i just i just feel this word i just want to speak to diabetes there's resurrection power Power and healing over diabetes. Diabetes is nothing compared to the power of my God's name. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, release your resurrection power over people right now. Resur resurrect your mind and get that junk out of there. Come on now. God doesn't want you to have those thoughts that the enemy's been putting in there. God loves you and he is for you and he is available to you right now if you just call upon him. If you just call upon him. Hallelujah. Wow, what a powerful word in a powerful time. Listen, I love you guys. I'm so excited about what will happen later on today. Uh, you be praying for us. If you can't be with us, would you pray for our 130 service that it'll just be a powerful, powerful time. Don't forget, you know, on Resurrection Sunday, listen, we'd love to see you at all three if you could do it, but we have a 6.30 a.m. sunrise service. We have a 10.30 online service, and we will have a 3 p.m. Uh, resurrection power celebration miracle all of it. We're going to glorify Jesus. Jesus is going to be glorified that day. You don't want to miss it. I love you guys. Amen. Don't forget to connect with us if you've never done that before. And uh, yeah, we'll see you maybe in a couple of hours or next week. Love you. Bye.